what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel it's game week nine here on so rare nba i've got some rewards to show you i've got actually i've got quite a few rewards to show you i'm going to show you some of my lineups as well for this week am i confident hell yeah i'm confident and also i'm going to run you through some of the tips that you know i'm just building my lineups I'm going to share with you some knowledge some premium knowledge i think on so rare nba this week let's get into it <laughs> Before we start, let's go back to the past where I'd have opened some rewards. And then also I'll open a reward here now after and then we'll build it. Yes, it's me from the past. Hello. We're here to open some so rare rewards. Uh, you can't actually see. Let me move myself quickly. There we go. We've got four rewards from the last week. Let's let's rip into them right now. Let's move myself back. Let's claim the reward. So we've got uh, tier five, tier five, and a lovely little tier four. <laughs> lovely little tier four. Thanks to Damien Lillard. And a tier two. We'll rip the tier two now. They've updated the designs, which is always nice to see. Uh, Grizzlies forward. Uh, that's a Jaron Jackson Jr. Do you know what? We take that. We take that. We have all the common cards because, as I've always mentioned, and I'm going to plug it again. If I win a limited in common, I'm going to give it away to a subscriber. Uh, I'm probably going to say that again in a minute, or I've already said it. In any case, uh, two tier fives. Probably going to be not useless, but they will hold the gallery. I didn't even see who it was. Otto Porter Jr. I actually think. I actually think that's all right for a tier five. Yeah, he's getting minutes. So as tier fives go, that's not terrible. Um, other tier five now. Is it? Oh, it's a bit choppy. Looks like it's a bit laggy. Uh, Magic guard, Gary Harris. Again, he gets minutes. He gets solid time. I thought this was going to be like Buddy Boheims and stuff like that, even though Buddy Boheims not in the league anymore, but you catch my drift. Anyway, rare contender. Uh, we came 55th, thanks to Damian Lillard. Tier four, got no idea who it can be. And it is Kings forward Harrison Barnes. We take a Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes is a okay for me. Let's get back to me doing my lineups in the future. Even though I'm talking, yeah, let's just check out my lineups. And yes, we've got even more rewards to run through as well. Uh, in pickup, we we just missed. We hit like two thousand or something. We didn't quite have the Santi Almada that was the the game week sort of hero, shall we say, for this one to, to win a reward. But as ever, I'm always going to give a reward away if I win that limited one in common, which is coming, coming soon. Limited contender then. We came at 253rd this week. Tier 3 card. You can get a good one, but it can be a bit iffy. Are we going to get nice? Okay, C. Guard. A case and Wallace. LTL 17. I don't know if that's good or not. I'll, I'll take the rookie card for it. He can obviously go off as he's done in the Spurs, near in Dublin, his L10. Yeah, do you know what? I'll, I'll take that. As, as L10, as, as L10s, as tier threes go, I think Casey Wallace is all right. Let me know what you think about this reward and the other rewards that I opened in the past in the comments down below. Did I get a W? Did I get an L? All of that sort of stuff. Let me know what you think down below. Let's get into my lineups now. So then for my common pickup lineup, as ever, like I mentioned a minute ago, if you, if I, sorry, if I win a reward using my common pickup lineup, I'll of course give it away to a subscriber of the channel. Just make sure you comment it down below as well. Luka Doncic is going to be my MVP. I don't care the fact that he's only got one game and it's against the Lakers. I'm going to take Luka all day long. The bonus at 46 is pushing it. So I'm going to throw him in for the time being. Now I've had some nice sort of middle ground pulls recently. I had that Julius Randle obviously a minute ago. I had a Jaron Jackson Jr. recently as well, but I think I'm going to run Kawhi still. Those two games against the Spurs are quite sort of, I like both of them for him. 38 is a little bit high. And with Westbrook moving to the bench now, I think the Clippers are going to start to sort of form some general routines of play. So I feel like they're going to gel a bit more. And Westbrook hopefully should see his cap come down a little bit, which will then help him to be a great asset in contending modes once his cap has come down. But in any case, we'll run with Kawhi Leonard. That leaves me with 18 then for two left to play. Now, Jaden Springer is someone that Nick Nurse has said is going to get minutes going forward. And when he's been given these minutes in recent weeks, he's sort of delivered. He was quite good against the net. I mean, the Sixers blew the nets out of the water in any case, but that would then leave me with 30. And that could put me in Nurkic or Washington. Ooh, okay. So I really like the matchup for Nurkic in the Golden State game. 
even with Aiton, it is not a particular worry. My only concern is the back-to-back -back there would mean he probably won't play both. Brook Lopez is a potential option. I think it's going to be Yus Yusuf Nurkic I go for here. I don't think it's PJ Washington. Between Nurkic and Brook Lopez, I'm going to go with Nurkic. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let's check out my limited lineups now for this week. Limited champion this week could be a big one for me. And now I've been hitting rewards in general. You know, not the sort of... I've had a tier one this year already, but none of the sort of creme de la creme. This week, I feel if, if everything goes my way, which of course you need it to, this could be a really strong one for me. Now, Joel Embiid will be my MVP. The two games is a slight worry on the back-to-back, -back, whereas I think this week Paul Reed could be a good play, but we'll come on to that at another point. But I think I, the Timberwolves game is not great. The Cavs game I really like. And Embiid started the season really well. So he looks sharp. He looks great. Sort of touch wood. Hopefully no injuries comes to him, but he's looking pretty sharp. I'm then going to pair him with Luca and Yanis. And like, I know what you're thinking already. You're like, okay, what on earth are these dumpster players you're going to get? But I really think Springer this week is going to be a solid option. He's looked good getting minutes. He's playing well in them and he's earning the trust of Nick Nurse to go out and play a little bit more. I think Daniel House Jr. is another one, just not as great of an option as Nick, as Nick Nurse, as uh, as Jaden Springer. But I think he's the he's the move I want to go for. I don't know what is going on here. We're, we're picking this. There we go. We're back. He's at an L to a six which then means I have 20 left. And I went out and picked up a, a Norm Powell, and Norm Powell was silly cheap. This is because I think in these two games against the Spurs, I think they're going to try one sort of option and then another in the, in against the same opponent. And I think that we, we're due a sort of Norm Powell game soon. So he's going to be the move that I play. At an L turn of 20, there's probably someone a little bit better out there, but I have him in my gallery. I think he'll be the move. And the fact that I can get Embiid, Luca, and Yanis, Yanis in a limited champion lineup, whilst also playing two guys that I'm confident will get good minutes. I like my chances this week of a reward. Right then, for limited contender, obviously none of the big dogs really in my gallery are going to be used. They're being used in the champion mode. I've still got players like Maxi Savonis and Paul George and, and whatnot, but none of these are going to go in here. First off, just tailing on from what I mentioned a moment ago, I think this is a week where Daniel House Jr. becomes quite interesting, especially on that back-to-back. -back. I could see Philly maybe look at giving some guys some rested minutes like a Tobias Harris who's been playing a lot recently. I could see them maybe condensing them down in one of these games, especially on the road. So an L turn of four, the fact that he's getting minutes and he's looking okay. I'm not a massive Daniel House Jr. lover, but do you know what? We'll, we'll run with him in any case. That then opens the door for 26 across the last four slots. So we can go out and we can go and spend a little bit more. Look, I know what I'm about to say is very contradicting, but we're going to give Jordan Paul another go. I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm giving Jordan Paul another go in this lineup, but he did drop five or six, and it was an absolute sham of a performance. And the, and the Wizards are moving on from him, or they say so. Apparently, there's rumors coming out that they're going to look to trade him. But it's a guard playing the Bucks, and then he's also got Charlotte. And I can't, if I'm not put, I'm not going to put him in my champion. But I feel like I can gamble on the contender one. So we're going to throw him in. That still leaves me at 26. Aaron Gordon this week, I think, is a no-brainer with the fact that he's got a game against the Pistons and then obviously he's going back for the Magic. Really like these sort of combos of Aaron Gordon. Uh, Storyline narrative is not always to be perceived as the way, but he's always got a really low like, sort of floor. He'll always get in and around the 30 mark for you. He'll never have a Jordan Paul five-point game unless he gets injured. But he's also got a ceiling to go with it. So we'll put an Aaron Gordon in there. That's leaving me with 24 left. I kind of want to throw Jordan Clarkson again. I picked him last week and he dropped like a 50 for me. What did he get? I don't know what is happening with Sora at the moment because everything else is fine, but it's just having an absolute sort of calamitous time trying to build this. Bear with me. Okay, I think we're back there. Right, so in any case, Jordan Paul and Aaron Gordon are going to be in alongside Daniel House Jr. I'm going to throw the Jordan Clarkson pick in. He did have that 50-point game. Is it going to work? See, of course, why have Sora updated it and now put them bottom right, bottom left? I'll move myself back over. Um, 56 there that he hit for me, uh, which secured that uh, reward. 
Jordan Clarkson will go in there. If, this is, I don't know what is going on here. And then we're also going to round it up with Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks, Dylan Brooks, Dylan Brooks. Uh, he's got the game against Golden State and the game against the Grizzlies. And I'll turn 23. I've got a 5% on him as well. I really, really like this. I don't know what is going on here. It's being, we're having major, major technical difficulties currently going on right now. But he's in. That lineup's done. Underdog next. And then my rares and in season tournament. Right then, underdog it is. I'm going to run the Jackson Hayes play. Uh, they've got a back to back this time. So it's a little bit more sort of acceptable for me to feel that AD might miss one of these games. And if he does, Jackson Hayes will be a smash pick. It's just not one that I'd recommend putting in your two sort of main limited lineups. Uh, next slot is going to go to Bike Port Jr. is an option, but I feel like he's going to miss the game. Shake Milton's going to go in because we know he gets minutes. That leaves me with 15 left. Paul Reed is someone that I mentioned at the top. That back to back makes me feel like Embiid might sit for the first time and, you know, or less minutes which would mean Paul Reed is a smash play. Gary Harris is an interesting one, but I feel like I might need him for my in-season tournament. I'm not sure yet. So we're going to skip him. Chris Boucher was a smash pick on Contender this week. Doubled his L10 because Jakob Pertl's minutes apparently are up in the air. If you didn't know about that, you should have known about that. We're on live before lock every now and then with Mike over at Team Hold. But in any case, do I want to pick him or Terrence Mann is in the starting lineup? If we pick Chris Boucher, that leaves me with 17 you throw that case in Wallace in, you know. Um, Thibault, even when Thibault's there, he, he, you need him to really be the main sort of guy in that lineup. Do you know what? I feel like I might pick that case in Wallace just for the sort of the idea of him helping coming in as the rookie in underdog winning a reward. That isn't a projection vibe. That's just a sort of, yeah, this is so rare. Let's just play it with that essence of it. We'll submit that as well. Let's do my rare lineups right now. Right then. So with rare, much like my limited side, I'm actually going really big on champion this week. And there's reason for it. Devin Booker, MVP. He's got two games against the Trailblazers and the Warriors. Now, right now, if I wanted someone to go and score against the team, I'd probably pick those two and maybe also Milwaukee. But we'll go with, with Booker for now. Next up, I'm going to partner him with Anthony Edwards and Damian Lillard. Yes, I'm doing that. Oh, I'm in contender, right? This is just an absolute... Let's just scroll back down to champion. This is... Just, stay with me for this. Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Damian Lillard. Uh, Ant-Man, 41 of an L10 playing against the Sixers and the Knicks. And they're not back-to-back, -back, so I should have him play both. Damian Lillard, same thing. He's playing Washington. And it, just be Dame. Just be Dame for a game against the Wizards. That leaves me with 19 across two spots left. Andrew Wiggins as an, uh, an L10 of 16. And I said to you, either last game week video or the one before that, he's going to have a big game sooner or later. And he did. He got 47 in the game against the OKC. That's not what you would expect of a Wiggins, but like in and around the 30 mark comfortably should be his floor. So the fact that he's running around at 16 currently to me is mad. So he's going to go in there as well in this champion lineup. That then leaves me 23 left. Right now, if I wanted someone else to fill this last remaining spot for me in my rare champion lineup, it would be none other than Clay Thompson himself. We'd have two Warriors guys in there. But right now, his price is a little bit inflated. I don't want to go out there and buy that on the rare champion side with the rewards as they are being so hard in rare champion currently. So luckily, I have a Bruce Brown because I do think he's a stellar option this week. I think the pace is, he's seen his floor, I should say, sorry, is really, really good. He'll always match you at a 20, but he's got potential for a double as you saw against the bucks there now the situation with the paces at the moment are is that halliburton is just dominating he did have that off night the other night but halliburton's the main guy you just need bruce brown to have like a heater game you need him to start well and that's when he'll come into it so i'm banking on two games against the hawks and also the raptors for him to do this for me also means i don't have to go out and buy someone else but as a rare champion lineup i think the fact that i can get booker edwards lillard and wigs in this as a team is really really strong brandon miller would be another option but again because of his rookie card he's quite expensive but we'll see what happens but for now we'll submit this we'll do our contender as well you stay with me actually and we'll do my contender right now um i did this i think last time for i think i did rare all on sort of one continuous flow uh we'll scroll on down for this and ish smith is someone that's genuinely been getting minutes for charlotte i don't understand why because he didn't really play any minutes at all uh the other year and i know that was with a better team and everything that came around from it but it was an interesting one just to see him being trusted with floor time in in terms of contender terence Mann can go in there those two games against the spurs kcp's a solid pick this week 
L10 and 19, and if it will show me on my matchups, Pistons and Magic for him, and the Magic are going for a bit of a, they're a strong, like they're a strong defense, but they're going through a lot of injuries at the moment. So we'll pick him in any case. Gary Trent Jr. loves an injury, but two games, he probably won't play both because they're back to back and he's just injured all the time. That then leaves me with 28 on average for the last two spots. Now, again, Jordan Paul, I didn't trust him in my champion, but I trusted him in my limited contender. I'm going to do the same with Rare. I'll play him in this. That then leaves me with 31. Aaron Gordon again. So I've got very similar. I've got Aaron Gordon and Jordan Paul, I think, in both Rare and limited contender. Russell, I mean, Bobby Portis is one to note, but I don't think Yanis will miss one of these because they're not back-to-back. -back, so he's not as good as he would be if Yanis sits. If Brogdon's fit, he'll come in and I'll move some players around. And then if not, Russell Westbrook genuinely is now one to note because his cap is going to keep falling and falling and falling because he's going to come off the bench. And the one week where Kawhi sits, Paul George sits, which will happen, they will have a game where they sit both of them and potentially Harden sits and all three of them go and they just go, Westbrook, run the team tonight. He will be a smash play for you. But that'll be my rare contender. We'll go on now and we'll go and do my rare underdog. And we'll finish it off with my in-season tournament, but I need to go and check that one. Rare around the dog. We'll scroll on down. Ish Smith becomes a great pick now. Uh, an L10 of four, smash pick. Jackson Hayes, smash pick. Utah, he's got a slight injury in any case, but I've really gone cold on Utah at the moment until the Suns really bed in what their rotation is going to be. Javon Carter, I could definitely pick. That's leaving me with 18 left. Trenton Watford has been looking good for the, for the Nets when he's been getting game time. Could pick Harrison Barnes. That leaves me with 16. If Nemhard if Nemhard plays, I don't mind playing him, but I think we'll have to take him out. If we go for Trent and Watford, we don't even have another 18. Hmm. Javal McGee could be the option. Do you know what? Yeah, Javal McGee is definitely going to be the option. We'll run McGee. Uh, we won't pick Nemhard. We will run 24 we can go to, actually. We can go Caleb Martin or Jaden Knight. Actually, we'll put Jeremy Sohan in there as well. Running point guard, two games against the Clippers. That is my underdog lineup. We'll finish off my in-season tournament and we'll get ourselves out of here. So after looking through this, I don't actually know what I can do for the in-season tournament this week. Now, this isn't the end of the world. As we know, there's seven game weeks for the in-season tournament and it only takes five of your best scores. But if I look through my gallery this week with the teams that are also playing, so obviously uh, Luca, I don't think, has a game. Yanis doesn't have a game in any case. There isn't much room in my gallery with three new season cards. And I've got quite a few new season cards in any case to play some of these. Like Jeremy Grant, Mo Wagner and Gary Harris are probably the best new season cards. I don't have, I got two Russell Westbrook new ones and the Clippers aren't playing in it. I don't have any rares. I don't have any of the, apart from like Luca and Yanis aren't playing. So then that's leaving me with 53 with, with two left. And like, even if I pick uh, Tyrese Maxey, I've got 73. So like, I don't really what what's the point of that lineup if you see what i mean i'll probably put it out there just for the xp boost and who knows it might score well but i don't think that's going to move the needle for me so this might be one of the weeks where i just go it's not going to be i'm not going to beat any of my scores and just have to sort of take it on the chin because this issue for me this week in my gallery is just that there isn't anyone really for me to play and i don't see myself prioritizing this over those two champion lineups I've got because I think they're really, really strong this week. And that's the beauty about these game modes is that I will have different lineups that I can prioritize each week. And that's why it's always good to have these new ones. But yeah, I think for me this week, it's going to be tough for me to put a really strong, like even if I if I go in there now and I'll build this with you, if I go with teams that are being used in another, in another lineup, I could run and bead potentially. I could run Maxi. And then it's got to be Grant, Mo Wagner and then even then I'm leaving 24 on the table because I don't have a a good new season card that's 24 and I could go out and buy one probably and I could go out and get that clay but the Warriors aren't even playing so I couldn't get clay that's that's the issue so for me right now I'm not sure I'm going to go for it I might change it by lock but right now I'm not sure I'm going to have a strong lineup for the in-season tournament this week. Let me know how you're doing uh, in terms of the in-season tournament down below are you playing this week? Are you going to be featuring in this you're going to have your strong lineup i want to know let me know down below in the comments make sure you're subscribed to the channel and i'll catch you in the next one peace